Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. Thank you for joining me in this video. And in this video, I am going to show you how to make these petite fancy bar earrings. They match the petite fancy bar necklace. Someone asked me if I could make a matching pair of earrings and this is what I came up with. So it's very similar. And um, this is the wire work. Just showing you the wire work close up there. So um, I'd want to ask you to any of you that aren't subscribers, please hit the subscribe button and support me in making future tutorials. And if um, you just feel so inclined, please share on social media. And because um, the more people that find me, the better it'll be. And if you can financially support me, um, please hit the join button. I have different options of retired videos or tips and secrets and, you know, hacks, that kind of thing um, for different membership levels. And uh, everything is greatly appreciate and please comment make comments too i prefer positive comments because we want to keep things in a good light for everyone um but the more comments i get the i i think that people can find them easier it puts it under trending or something like that so all that helps me and i love you all for doing it okay so um Let's get on with it and make these earrings. Okay, so what you're going to need is four pieces, one foot long of 20 gauge dead soft wire. I'm using raw copper. And you're gonna need four pieces of chain that uh, the 20 gauge wire will fit into. Now, most likely any chain you have will work, but um, you could always take a piece of 20 gauge wire with you to the store and the, the, the chain I'm using, the wire can actually go um, even in the middle of a link, but what you really need is just checking uh, end link for sure, because that's all you need, right, is um, the end links to fit around uh, 20 gauge wire. You're gonna need um, your beads. Now, if you're matching to your uh, petite fancy bar necklace, um, you're gonna need three sizes of matching beads. You're gonna need your, um, for the necklace, you're gonna need your 10 millimeter bead and six millimeter beads for that. And for these earrings, you're gonna need two six millimeter beads and four four millimeter beads. And today I'm just using, um, you know, the light, purple jade, lavender jade, and um, let's see, you're going to need your ear wires, and you're going to need your chain nose pliers, your round nose pliers, and your flush cutters or snips, as some people call them. So um, let's start. Now, I've, I've done, just for ease of reference and giving you lots of room for artistic play, one foot pieces now it is too long if you're doing sterling silver you'll want to try it with copper first and be more specific as to the lengths you need this would work great with sterling silver uh, to tell you the truth and um so yeah so it's going to start much like we did with the fancy bar necklace it's actually very similar so you're going to take one piece of your 20 gauge wire and put the ends together and find the center is basically what we're doing and then um then you're going to make a loop a nice small loop like you would for an ear wire um, or top of an earring drop so not too big and you're just going to make a normal loop and you're going to wrap it so it looks like it's three wraps, but it's actually only two, like that. Hopefully I was in frame there, I wasn't watching. Okay, I should gotta pay attention. So if you look closely, 
it looks like there's three, but it is only two. And we're going to do the C wrap just like we did with the necklace, but we're only using three beads with this. So first uh, four millimeter bead, and we're going to wrap it just like the necklace. So you're going to take like that. And we're wrapping it twice to put the distance between the beads. And it's hard to hang on to because the bead is so small. So it's really fighting me and it will you too. And so it really gave a big space there, but we need to cinch it up anyways. For the first one, I'm cinching it up right from the loop. I'm actually going to put my pliers, my chain nose pliers in the loop and push it up like that. And you just want to snug it up to the bead. You don't want to go too far because it, if your um, bead is delicate, it can smash your bead and you got to start all over. I've done that, speaking from experience. Okay, so a lot of times with making jewelry, it's all with being, um, knowing how much to push, knowing how much tension. So now I'm gonna put my six millimeter bead on and doing the same process all over again. But it'll be easier to do this one because it's a bigger bead. So I'm holding on to this for support and wrapping it twice. And then of course the wire always goes to the opposite direction because we're doing the C wrap and it zigzags. It still isn't cinched up there okay and now the final bead once I don't know why it spreads out when it's a smaller bead. I think it's because it's so hard to hang on to the bead. And it didn't wrap very tight around the wire. So what I do then is I just crimp the loop a little bit closed and it snugs up. Just a trick I've learned over time. There, and now it really needs cinching up. I see a lot of spacing throughout the whole thing and I'm going to do it with my hand this way. I'm hanging on with a plier at the end of the wire so I don't wreck the wire here and I'm pulling it and that seemed to help but it still needs more. You might not have as many difficulties as I do. Your hands might be stronger than mine. Okay, I think there I think I've got it now so the next step is to make sure that the C's are all level and the loop has to be level with them as well okay and then um, did I mention that I want you to do the two full wraps here again? So it looks like three, but it's only two. And then, I, and then snip it off. The, the C wrap wires are the one that we're snipping off. Okay, and then we're going to try and crimp that end in as best we can. I mean, it's not crucial. Like that. Okay, so the next step is to make a matching loop 
the same size that we did here and um, because we've got the same amount of wraps already we're gonna bend use that wire to bend this wire and then we're gonna make that loop right there the same size And then I'm only going to wrap it once around and I'm actually making it go at an angle and I'm going to crimp it in, snip it and crimp it in there. And see we got a quite a bit of length here and that's okay because we're going to use this piece later. So don't throw it away. And okay. So that's what it looks like right now at this point. Okay. You could make a pair of earrings out of it like this, just like you could the necklace. And, um, and then it would match that necklace. So basically, if you really wanted to think about it, I'm showing you how to make two different styles of earrings and necklace with, with these. Okay, so now the next step is I need to make this um, loop level again. I mean, not again, but as well as the other one. And I see that it didn't crimp in very well. There we go, that's better. So the next step is to take well, actually what I'm going to do, because I'm these earrings are identical. I am just showing you one. And, um, and then, well, I'll do the other one. I'll pause the video while I do the other one, because you don't need to watch it twice. So um, go ahead, and I might as well make my other one right now. I'll pause the video, and we'll get both of these done. Do the exact same thing. Okay, so it's on pause. Okay, so I'm back, and I just realized um, with another step that I'm doing with these earrings that the wrap that we did here, uh, that last wrap, was useless because we are going to snip this um, wire right here to make it so the, the, the ring opens up. So what I want you to do is actually just do that now. I was going to do it later, and then I realized um, we don't really need to wrap that there, and that just makes it awkward. So what I want you to do is take that wire that we wrapped around, and you got to be careful because it's going to, the wire's going like this and like this, and then around, you got to make sure you snip the right end of it or you're going to end up starting all over again. So this is, I was snipping the end of the wire, uh, the loop that's closest to the end of the wire, if that makes sense. Okay, and so then it's going to be, it's kind of like a jump ring there. And this is going to come off because we don't really need that piece there. And see, it's like this. And that's okay. We're just going to take our uh, round nose pliers and close that loop up like that. And then we're going to use that later to put the chain on it. Okay. And if you want, you could do the same thing um, with this one right now. Um, I actually wanted it on the other side of it. But, you know, it doesn't matter. You could pick either side with this one because it doesn't matter because both of them are, are secure. This one, it mattered uh, where you snipped it. This one doesn't matter. So you could pick the same side or the opposite side. I'm picking the opposite side and it really, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's what we got to do. Now they're like, now they're like um, 
open rings. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my, my other one, and then I've got both of them the same way. So I've got to pay attention to what is the end. Got to wrap it around. That's the end. So I got to do that right there. It was actually wrapped pretty good, but you see how it, it still fell off. So that's why it's important to do this now because it, it would uh, ruin the integrity of your earring. Okay, and I close that up like that, and now it's ready. Okay, so the next step, once you've got those two done, and I am going to encourage, because um, I make doing this in a two-part thing and splicing it together, showing the finished product at the beginning, which then the finished product is the actual piece we're making. I will tell you to, I will ask you to watch the entire video before you start because of, just because. <laughs> it's always good to do that with all of them. Okay. So now, you know those scraps I was talking about before that we snipped off? What we're going to do with them, we probably only need one of them, but we need to make two um, infinity rings here, uh, links. And I usually just say, you know the infinity links I make? Um, I think I did that in the last video. Or anyway, somebody commented that they didn't know what I was talking about. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to just show you how to do it in this this particular um, video. So I'm going to ta take my wire and I'm going to make a medium sized loop. Don't want it too big, don't want it too small. And I'm not, I usually make these with work hardened wire, but because this is earrings, it doesn't need to be um, that strong for the purpose of it, its job. So I want you to make a P loop like that, nice and neat, okay? Then I want you the same size of place on the plier to take, grab the plier um, right there, snugging up to that loop, and I'm holding it tight there, and I'm gonna push this loop this way. Um, can you see where? Where the wire is. I'm just making it wrap around there and then I'm wrapping this around like that and when I pushed that loop around it just gave it a more finished look there. I mean you can do it without doing that it just doesn't look as neat so it depends how neat you want it to look and because this is going to be a focal almost um, a center part of your earring it's important for it to look neat okay so now I'm taking my flush cutters and I'm going to try and snip it as close as possible to that other wire right here see if you can see that is it gonna okay so I've got it there and the flush part is on top there And so what I did is I made it snip right there. And now I can take my chain nose pliers and flatten it out. And when you flatten it out, might as well give it a good squeeze and it'll work hard in it to some degree. And there you go. And isn't that, it turned out perfect, see? And you can do that too. You just have to be careful with the steps you do. And it takes more time when you're careful. But um, if you want the earrings to look really nice, you need to take the time. And so now I'm just making a second one. Um, I'll pause it. Okay, so now I've got my two infinity links made. And now I'm going to set them aside and we'll use them later on. I just wanted to show you what we were using that's scrap wire for 
and we still have lots of scrap wire left but um, it's just made it easier to work with now now we're going to decorate these just like we did with a petite earrings I mean necklace the petite fancy bar necklace these are petite fancy bar earrings okay so I want you again to take a piece of your one foot long 20 gauge wire dead soft and round it not too much but that way you know it's the center and we're going to do the same method that we did with the necklace but we're doing one wire and we're doing one wire because two wires for earrings would be just too bulky so i'm going to take this and i'm going to hold it there and wrap around once same method we did with the necklace and and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side but i've got i've got it so it's snugged up against the bead so it looks nice and wrap it around once and i see this bent on me just fix it not sure when that happened must have been when i was wrapping this but we should always check and I need to straighten that out my fingers are sore from making them oh it's this wire flipping around on me okay so it wasn't silly me okay so just like with the necklace we are going to do a swirl in there but you might want to do both ear this part on both earrings just so that we're doing we're not mirroring but it just so that it um you're doing both the same so i found the center like that unlike that okay so now I'm just straightening the wire with my fingers because we need it straightened and we're gonna now do a tiny swirl over there heading into towards the center bead so just like that and we're going to do all four of those because we want them all the similar size so two on each by all four okay so like that now take your other earring and do the same thing so the one on the right is going counterclockwise and the one on the left is going clockwise. Okay, so this one looks, is it too small? It's just facing a different angle so it looks smaller, but it's really not. If it was, you would just take this wire and push it in and it would make the loop a little bit bigger by pushing it in. Okay. And again, I'm straightening this wire out because we want it. And your fingers really don't work hard in it a lot. They just more like straighten it. Okay, so then now we're just going to do a circle around that. But a bigger circle. okay and then you actually get to determine how big you want it you might want it smaller than i make okay i like i like about there and it's going to cover your bead because it is so small um that's why again another reason why we're only working with one wire here okay so we got that and we're going to do the same on the other earring. Okay, so like that. Okay. 
and you do I, I'm noticing that one is higher than the other so I'm gonna push this up I'm gonna try and do it with my fingers so I don't mar it there we go I'm gonna try and push that down there now the next step is um, and it keeps flipping on me a little bit. I don't remember that happening with the necklace. Okay, and now we want to make a curve underneath this bead like this. Okay, so I'm having to tease it a little bit with my finger, push it. And sometimes it doesn't cooperate and you need, then you need to Sometimes you need to take your pliers and, and form it, but you do only, you never go this way with this because you'll mar it. You want to go um, this way, up and down, because if it does scratch it, it's going to be hidden. But again, try to be very gentle and you can shape it, but that takes practice to do and you got to know where to put it. So that's about where I want it. And now I'm going to, wrap around this and I'm going to snip it off at the back to crimp it in and then we're going to do all four the same way and you know these second wires and I might do that in the instructions I have look how much excess I have um, easily 10 or 10 inches or 8 inches would be enough so I'm going to in the instructions in the write-up I'm going to write 10 inches um, okay so again another reason to watch the entire video first because I'm kind of doing this on the fly a little bit just to cut back on some of my prep time And I crimp that in, trying to make sure it doesn't have a sharp edge. If it does, then you take your file and you file, a metal file it works the best, and you file it down, but mine's not really catchy. And now I'm going to do the other side to match. We will actually want all four of them to match. I'm going to put it upside down. Get this out of the visual way. There we go and tease it with my nail. I'm so hard on my nails with when I make jewelry. Okay, oh there, yeah, okay. And wrap it around. So it's one entire, we're wrapping it around probably one and a half times, once completely and then going to the back where we're gonna snip it about halfway, a little bit more than halfway, and crimp it in. And there it is okay so there you are that's what it looks like and now to make it really match we're going to um, give it that curved look and sometimes that can affect your wrapping you had it, I had it perfect before and now it's moving and you just kind of make them match as you go and we don't want it overly curled or crest we don't want too strong of a crescent because it is only three beads okay so just a mild one like that and that looks pretty okay so that one's done and now we're going to try and make 
this one look very similar. So again, I'm going to tease this and I'm actually going to straighten it a bit more to do it. So there we go. And I, I support it here while I wrap around to and then to the back. Snip it off. Perfect. Okay, and the last one. Now I showed all of that for both of them just because um, sometimes you run into difficulties and I just figured there would be better chance if I did it more to have that accident happen while I'm teaching because it's always good to um, show you how to fix it. Okay, so now that one's ready to give it the bend, the crescent bend. And I'm going to take the other one and make sure I have a similar shape. I'll go like this. I think this one needs a little bit more arching. Okay, I think that's good. Now this one needs a little bit more. Okay, I'm good with that. So the next thing I want you to do is take your four pieces of one inch chain and we're gonna open up the links. So you have to pay attention to what part is open And put your chain on there. And I'm wiggling it, making sure it's really nice and closed. Okay. Now, I want you to pay attention. I think we'll do that check later, but we're going to have to do a check to make sure that it sits forward. And I can't really show it on camera because the, ca the way the camera is. But when it hangs, you want to be able to see the detail. So I think these loops need to be bent slightly. And of course it opened up my loop. So I'm gonna do that. So it's gonna be finicky on you, but you gotta make it till you're happy, right? Aha. And there we go. And same thing with this one, moving it back a little bit. Okay, and then you're gonna do that with both of them, uh, whether you do it at this stage or you do it once it's on your ear wire. Um, <laughs> if you do it at this stage, you might end up with it. Okay, so I've kind of edited the video and I took out um, the putting together of the one earring because you don't need to watch it twice. So um, the next step you do is you take your infinity link, you open it up 
and you just put the chain on it one at a time. Like that. Close it up carefully because you don't want to deform your infinity link. And flatten your infinity link like this. And then open up your ear wire and put it the other end of your infinity link on your ear wire. And at this point, you can check to make sure it's hanging good and do small adjustments uh, just to make sure it's um, sitting right. If it's sitting off, you might have to adjust what direction your uh, loops are in and um, until you're happy with it. And this is the finished product. You have to make sure that they're hanging forwards too, because sometimes you hang your earrings backwards without meaning to. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And there, they're done. So thank you for joining me in this video. Um, Hit your subscribe button if you enjoy my videos and learn from me. Please share on your social media um, if you enjoyed it so that other people can find me as well. And it would help promote my videos. And, um, and if you feel like you could support me, the join button for my retired videos and um, other helps, um, that would be fantastic if you could uh, support me that way so thank you for joining me again and god bless and we'll see you in the next one bye for now